Welcome to another edition of the Motivational Sundays with Kevin and Friends. This show was originally created from the one of more, hundred, one of more than 300 quotes that I had created for the contents of uh, my books. After studying 440 years, God, I didn't age myself. I get all screwed up today. Listen to Brother Naheem. But anyway, we got together with a couple of friends and we were always wondering, how one quote landed with one person, were there words that just lay there on a page, or were there conversations to be had? So you know the way we do as people, you know, Naheem, Lois, Denise, Danielle, Danny, Curtis, Vanessa, um, Christopher and Gilda, we all got together and you know, said, you know something, let's do something. Let's talk about these quotes. So we meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We toss out a quote, everyone's on camera. We invite people to come in and strangers to join us. And we, based on our perceptions, interpretation, we see how these quotes land on us. So well, today we have a quote, all right? That's brought to us from the Bible, all right? Vanessa has brought something to us. So without further ado, we, I'm gonna turn this over to the silky sound of our voice of the show, Mr. Otis Spencer, gone. Tell us what the quote for the day is. Grand rising, everyone. Happy Sunday. And the quote. And to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. From Ephesus 4.32. Ephesians right. 4.32. All right. Well, that's okay. I, I didn't know how to pronounce it either. So um, <laughs> I'm glad, glad you jumped out there before I tried to do it. So, uh, Vanessa, you brought the quote today. And it is the holidays. Everyone, I want to say belated happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully everyone um, got enough to eat. Hopefully you had great conversation. You uh, went back in time and talked about how you acted and conducted yourself as a child. And, you know, some of us haven't changed much since we were children. But anyway, I hope there's lots of loves and hugs at your Thanksgiving table. All right. So, Vanessa, you know, with your three uh, wonderful children. How was Thanksgiving with you, and how does this quote land on you? <clears throat> um, thank you, Buenos dias to all. Uh, I um, I wanted to say and bring something this weekend because this weekend it's a day of thanks. It's a day of getting together, family, and unfortunately, because of all the chaos and turmoil all around us. It's not always so pretty. And we have to remember to be kind and tender hearted because we don't know how things are going on for others. But how it hit me was sort of, of the same. I had to be tender hearted and to think of others before myself. I had to be kind and forgive those around me, those who brought chaos on a day of thanks and forgiveness is key forgiveness is key not only for them but for you mainly because if you hold things it eats at you it takes away from your peace you need to have peace in yourself that's what we all want right? Every Miss America, every Miss Universe, I want peace. And if you are kind, tenderhearted, and forgive, you will have peace. And um, that's um, my answer for you all. All right. Everyone's looking for peace. Peace. Everyone's trying to <laughs> find it. So, um, you know, uh, I, I I can't say it. Any, anytime I hear something from the Bible, I always remember I got screwed over by someone that's trying to tell me what the Bible said. So um, I, I struggle with this quote personally myself. So let, let me hear um, that peace um, is um, spreading around um, with the rest of us. Um, Christopher, again, thank you for your service. I'm always going to say this. Um, I grew up in a military family, so I know the sacrifice that you you have made. I know the sacrifice you continue to make as you represent uh, a branch of the, our military service. And I want to say thank you. And if I can speak for everyone else, we also say thank you for your service. And Gilda, without going without saying, we thank you for your sacrifice and allowing your husband to serve 
our country. This quote, and to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. I'm not even going to try to say this uh, where it came from in the Bible because I'm going to screw it up. How's this quote <laughs> land on you? You know, uh, if I had, if I'd have thought a bit more about this, I would have gotten uh, James Earl Jones to give the quote. I I've got the entire Bible uh, by James Earl Jones. And not that it would in any way, you know, diminish Otis. Otis is still the man. But uh, I would have done that. It would be, it'd be nice. But no, um, as far as the quote goes, and again, thank you uh, for the acknowledgement of the service. Kevin, I, I did it out of love. I did that out of out of uh, an automatic response. It's simply the way I am. Uh, service wasn't even a, uh, a side thought. It was what I knew I had to do. Uh, but to the quote, yesterday, um, we had a parade here in Lowell, the, um, I guess the City of Lights. Yeah. And um, they close off our street uh, and the stage, the uh, parade is staged right here in front of the house. So uh, for the whole day, parking is banned and policemen on motorcycles are picketing or ticketing everybody and tow trucks are dragging people away. Um, we had seen the signs, so we parked in the garage earlier. But as I was walking, and there was at least a dozen, well, half a dozen people were still ticketed and being towed away. Now, here's the uh, here's here's the rub. The city has two garages on either side of uh, our condo building, and both garages were open for free because of the parade. Do you think anybody mentioned that in the orange signs that they had that said no parking? Uh, as a result, I saw three, I'm sorry, I saw six tickets placed on cars. So I spent uh, the better part of uh, yesterday morning walking up and down the street, uh, uh, informing people who were told by the police they can't park here, park in the garage. The garages are open. And they're free. And one guy looked at me and said, why are you doing this? He says, because they're free. Why get a ticket if you've got free parking? And he said, no, no. Do you work for the uh, city? I said, no, I just live here. Um, and the, the second half of that story is uh, there are two charging connections in the garage. I was charging one car. I put it away in a second parking spot. I was gonna move the the, uh, the other car to the spot. And a lady, her name is Linda. I didn't get her last name, but uh, she pulled in before I could. And my first response was, this doesn't even look like a, a, an electric car. I'm seeing the exhaust pipes. What is she doing in an electric car spot? Um, she later explained that she had, it was a, a hybrid. So she parked there and I parked in another spot and we walked together to the, uh, uh, kiosk where you would pay and I says oh no you don't pay today it's free she says really it says yes it's free today so we walked up to the um, start of the parade talking and I, I got her name and uh, it was weird I was feeling okay I'd I, I done my bit um, uh, I, I did my good deed for the day and uh, the day the, the morning passed around 9 maybe 10 o'clock and I walked back, I was walking back down to the uh, garage and I ran into Linda again. It was like a miracle. Mm -hmm. And she was pulling her car out. I said, hey, slow down for a minute. Let me go get my other car and I'll park, park my car and just as you leave. So she left, I parked my car and I charged it. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, what a what a weird morning this has been. I mean, like, uh, what what's the, the, the chances of me actually meeting someone, uh, speaking, saving her, you know, $35 for the parking, and then have her leave just as I needed to get down here to a par uh, to charge up my car. And I decided that it all stemmed from the fact that I took the time to not only uh, speak with Linda, but inform people on the road 
trying to, you know, circling the block, trying to find a parking spot, that there were free, there's free parking in the in the uh, garages. I even spoke to two policemen. Uh, I explained to one policeman that, you know, I'm trying to tell these guys that they can park in the garage and not on the street. This one guy didn't speak any English. He said, no, I'll just drive around. I said, well, you don't have to. And the cops said, you know, they don't listen. <laughs> and the, other, the other cop, I simply said, well, why didn't someone place on these no parking uh, signs if free parking was available in the, in the garage? But the bottom line is I did what I would have would have loved someone to have done for me to inform me that I don't need to uh, get a ticket. There's free parking in the, in the garage. And that um, not only that, there is a free charging connection right there for, uh, for my car. So I kind of somehow picked up that what I did was immediately uh, identified and I was rewarded <clears throat> that, that action by, you know, extending the hand of friendship to people I don't even know. Uh, and without being overly biblical, without being, you know, a typical Bible pounder, uh, that simple, simple quote uh, is, is, is free and it's easy. And in most cases, the um, reward is instant. Like when, when Naheem came on with uh, his, his troubles of his day and uh, the um, uh, reluctant smile, um, it, it, it didn't take much, you know, for Lois to say, hey, you know, here's your smile for this morning. And it was instantly, it was instantly returned. I mean, like, that's what that quote means to me. Uh, you don't need to pass out dollar bills. M million dollar checks is what uh, Leon Musk thinks you, you know, you should give somebody to make them feel good and vote for freaking Trump. All you need to do is smile. Lois proved that. Naheem instantly responded. And that is what I take out of the quote. You know, it, it, it's it's amazing. You know, I I, I think months ago um, I shared my hashtag find one thousand reasons to be kind to someone. Um, you example simplified um, the reason why that is part of my my hashtag. It doesn't take a lot of effort in order to be kind, but sometimes people are not used to being. Um, receiving kindness and they don't react properly. That's the reason why they ask you why is because they're not used to it. And I'm going to say to you, re regardless of what happens in the next six months, the next three years, next four years, whatever, don't let anything change you. Don't let anyone change you. Um, I would say brace yourself for, for things to come, but don't let anything change you. I appreciate your consistent acts of kindness your, and your persistence in doing that without asking for anything in return. Um, and I, I'm glad you're a direct reflection of uh, what this quote is. Uh, my grandmother used to say uh, in our house, so God forgave a man to put a uh, spear in between his rib. And I think this is part of where this came from. Um, I, I lay no claim to be bigger than God, but I try um, to, to live that way. Um, you know, I am not absent from sin. I am not absent from just being a human being. You are a um, genuine example of what a human being should show up as every single day. Um, we have um, Danielle Chambers. She's one of the youngest members of um, our family here. I'm just curious what the youth today, when they look at this quote, and I'm going to ask Otis, give her some time to um, prepare. Um to repeat the quote for the people that just tuned in. So Otis, if you don't mind. And to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. How's it land on you, Dan? Well, uh, this quote, I was thinking about it in a lot of ways. So I'm always literal, as you guys know. So I kind of, highlighted the few words first, which was the kind, tender-hearted, forgiving, and then underlined the you part of it because it's like it brings it full circle. Um, 
So first, just thinking about the word kind is something that we hear all the time and people are always like, oh, be nice to people, be kind, do this, do that. But it's like, there's also just this like part of things where it's like kindness shouldn't come from a space of expecting it back because that's when there's unexpected, like um, there's like disproportionate like expectations created. And it's not truly kindness. We're just kind of doing that to make yourself feel like you're a good person. So that's it. It comes from emptiness and kind of like a pride standpoint instead of like the love part where it's like where kindness is. And I kind of looked up, like, is love kindness? And it's like, yeah, it's a part of that. So I was, like, thinking about that all the time um, because I do try to, like, be a person that is expressing love in my actions, like, expressing how to treat other people with love. And I know that there have been times where I've had that sense of entitlement, like, yeah, I did that for you. And, like, I hadn't really noticed it because I've just been so used to doing so much and like the kind of people pleasing tendency. So in my growth and my development, I learned that sometimes you can be tender hearted. So that sentimental and understanding part of things can be just where it's ending, you know, that could be the ultimate kindness is just having and holding space for somebody. Sometimes you don't have to do anything. So I think like, this is kind of like speaking to how we should be as people so it's like I also was just thinking about when reading this where is it coming from and the new testament is kind of this part of the bible where it's explaining how God has like you know come as Jesus and like this is his ultimate sacrifice to the the world is him experiencing as we do and you know, seeing the struggles, understanding it on, like, a personal level, living the human experience. So it's, like, if God is able to kind of, like, see all of these things and he's able to forgive us and, like, we're supposed to, like, kind of embody him because we're the, like, image of that, like, we're created with this image of love, then it's like all of this has to be honored and we kind of live in a transactional society where everyone kind of like taught to ask what's in it for me or taught to to do things like that where it's like it's okay to look out for yourself but if you have a little give a little and I guess like this also shows that like at least for me this is just like jumping out at the fact that like People pleasing, people pleasing is not necessarily kindness. It's just you, like, kind of allowing people to run all over you. And for me, that's something that I have to learn to distinguish because I always want to look out for everyone. But it's like, if I'm not looking out for myself, I can't look out for anyone. So it's like, forgiving myself is also a part of all of this. And so, yeah, the quote just was kind of really deep to me because it's like, it it's just showing, like, you know, all these things that we, like, all the negativity that we're, like, fighting in this world, all the judgment, the blame, the assumptions, like, all these things that people kind of not living our life, like, they tend to pass on to us. It's also, like, about being kind to ourselves even when we feel misunderstood in that and just, like, continuing to forgive other people because they don't live your life. They don't live, like, we don't live each other's lives like we each have our own individual person. So I just, I don't know, overall this like actually came at like a really good time for me because I just need to, you know, forgive myself, forgive others and understand that sometimes things just kind of happen and we have to just work through that. And it takes, you know, healing. It's not going to just get fixed over Yeah. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Dan. Every single time you speak, you you give hope to to this. Um, and when we when we talk about the millennials, you know your generation. If everyone is like you, the world is going to be in a much better place tomorrow. The world is going to be a much better place. I, I I thank you for your gift. I thank you for your voice. And I hope I speak for many of the people on on here. And before I go go to Curtis, um, that's a tough act to follow when you. When you when you hear youth youth speak, and we 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 tend to ignore um, our, our our children because we talk at them instead of talking to them, 
And I'm glad we were listening to you, Danny. Um, Curtis, this quote, um, how, how do you say this? E Ephesians or whatever? Ephesians. 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 All right. So this quote from the Bible, and I know, I don't know if this shows up in the new Bible that's being sold right, right now. Um, <laughs> I'm curious to, to, to see if it comes with pictures or anything else um, in the Bible. Um, probably does. Whole yearbook. Uh, I'm being sarcastic. Um, <laughs> I'm being juvenile. You know, what the heck? My show. You know, he'll probably cut me off, you know, in a couple months. You know, <laughs> But anyway... <laughs> Um, to be kind to one another, another tender hardness, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ in Christ forgave you. Curtis, how does this quote land on you? Because my head's all over the place right now. Well, happy Sunday to all, and I am glad to be back um, for the last uh, three weeks or so. Uh, I have been serving somewhat as the uh, our house as the place of refuge for those folks who are going through challenging times, um, whether it's post-election, uh, screaming that they needed to do together, whether it was uh, just looking for a, a friendly place to have a great meal and uh, you know share times of old, uh, we seem to have collected folks over the last uh, period of time, which has made Sundays a little bit more challenging to get up to to jump on with what I think we've uh, I've seen is when they are entering the house there's they had a little bit of the Nahim vibe I cannot believe what has happened I don't know why it's doing this I don't know where it's going and then there's something about breaking bread with folks that gives you that uh, chance to sort of step back for a moment, step out of your own trials and tribulations and realize that there's other people going through very similar things. And that, hey, you know, maybe if we all share in what's, what is on our hearts, it will be better for us. And so that tender heartedness piece is what, what floats into there for me. Um, and, and trying to figure out what little can I do and what can I bring that that maybe makes somebody's day, brings a smile to their face and all. And so part of this is whenever I'm out and I'm in the store and it's the person who's checking me out or somebody who's on the aisle in the grocery store saying, here's where you find this piece. I always try to see if there's something I can do to lift them up for that particular moment in the day. It's like Christopher did in being out in front and telling people where to go. Uh, to park the car so they don't get tickets. Uh, but, you, you know, if you are behind the meat counter all day long, all people want to do is ask you for stuff. When you say, you ask them, how are they? It's just such a change for them in their particular, their, their day, perhaps. Um, you, you you bring a smile, especially the customer service reps. It's, it's Black Friday. Everybody's running crazy. You're trying to order stuff that you probably don't need to buy for people you don't necessarily like. And therefore, you know, you're trying to figure out how to keep that in balance. And when you just ask them a question like, so how are you today? A what? <laughs> it, it's just such a, a it, it's sort of twisting, twisting it around. And the thing that I always find around Thanksgiving is it's a time where I can reach out to people I may not have spoken with in a while and be able to say, so, so how are you doing? You know, what, what, what else is going on in your life? It, it's just nice to connect with you. Um, and so that is sort of the portion of the quote that falls on me. I'm sure there's more there, but I try not to go on forever. And so I will pass the, the microphone back to our illustrious uh, producer, director, man of the people, who will pass it on to the next person. And that was a great uh, introduction to Naheem. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, he, man spoke of, of, of peace and kindness and Black Friday. Why is Black Friday? Why is it black? Can it be any other color? They have scrubbed off the reality that Black Friday was when they were selling the black folks. Okay. That has been scrubbed out and has been become something else. But the reality of life, Black Friday, was when they wholesaled 
slaves. You won't find that anymore because they got rid of that because it somehow has mutated into this, go buy some furniture instead of a Negro. You know, um, that was, that's, that's history. That's our history. That's American history. And actually it's a uh, world history because, you know, the sale and, and uh, of people, if we want to talk about kindness, the selling of people is an unkind act. The enslavement of people is an unkind act. And Danielle, I got to give it to you. And I knew why I got up and I was in, came on there because you said two things that were very important. People pleasing is not necessarily being kind. And when others are trying to please others and somehow you get caught in the middle, it's not so pleasing for yourself. Mm -hmm. I came on this morning and yes, I was heavy and uh, a little frustrated and a little angry because this has been several weeks of this transition and working around other people, trying to be kind to help other people, even to the point where you're going to rent a vehicle and move things for them working around their schedule, working around them and what they need and being kind and understanding. I get it. I get it. But at some point I'm not Jesus. And sometimes I can't forgive as quick as Jesus could or God could because at the end of the day, it's hurting me. So when, when you, when it starts to hurt you, you got to find a way to forgive yourself. You're right, Vanessa, forgiving yourself first. So in forgiving myself, I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go sit up here and motivate with my brothers and sisters who lift me up and try to get some clarity. The quote, again, <laughs> the quote again, I'm going to put it, where is this? Right here. And to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. Again, that's a very heavy task. And I've heard three different stories that went on because people had to tell their story about being kind and finding that moment of kindness and peace in the middle of frustration. Because again, we're not Jesus. We don't have that omnipotent power. We are man, woman, and child on this planet. And we have feelings. And sometimes while we're trying to give so much love and it gets rejected, it causes a great deal of internal pain. And when do you forgive yourself from that pain? How do you forgive yourself from that pain? Because the how is really where it's at. How do you do it? You can get a bunch of instructions, but you got to find your way. So you got to find your way to be tenderhearted. You got to find your way to forgive. You got to find a way to believe that you have the power to do so. I mean, Chris said it your best. It was hard, but he took the time. He said, you know what? I'm going to be kind and I'm going to help other people out because these people aren't helping. And he did it because... He wanted to help folks. Hey, don't 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 get another ticket for fifty, sixty, hundred dollars. Go park over there because they weren't kind enough to let you know that you can park over there. So I'm gonna be kind enough to let you know. Why am I doing it? Because if I if not me, then who? And that's what Job. That's what God told Job. How about that one? <laughs> I, I'm afraid to bend over to pick up that mic. That <laughs> mic is hot. <laughs> that was hot. I I'm gonna tell you and. Um, and, and again, as you pull back the layers of each individual on here, there's one thing about that I, I can always trust. We speak the truth. Um, it may not be always what our listeners want to hear or being prepared to hear, but the truth is hard. We're not Christ. right? We're not God. My father always, always said the sorry was just an excuse until you did it again. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on, let's go to you church know, on it. We're, we're, we're all we're all, all human. It's just that we have to make sure that we do better the next time and realize that whatever we have done, we own the damage we have done to someone else and not repeat that. Because that that's when tender hearting be, becomes hard. All right. So uh Lois Campbell, how you doing? How you right. doing? With that right. beautiful Thank smile. That Thank beautiful you. smile. That's why I always say, "Why well, you got all thirty-two teeth? Smile while you still got them." <laughs> and she's using it. Lois, how's this quote? I know it's hard to follow Naheem. How's how's this quote land on you? Well, happy Sunday, guys. You got it right, Kevin. It's hard to follow Naheem, but I'm happy to have you back, and I'm happy to share my smile with you anytime. <laughs> so, um, 
you guys said a lot and I feel like I should do a, a Glenda today, like just like, you know, be kind. But um <laughs> <laughs> but on Thanksgiving Day, uh, myself, my my Lions Club, uh Kobe, one of the dare to be different person, and, and actually Larnes was there as well. We went to Jacob restaurant in Harlem and they have two restaurants there. And they opened their restaurant on Thanksgiving Day to everyone who walked in. And they got free food. I, I got some myself. So you should see the smiles on their faces as they come in and how grateful and thankful they were just to feel appreciated and feel loved and feel like someone was really out there um, that was thinking of them and wanted to be kind to them. And they were appreciative. So um, be kind and forgive one another. For me, I do it for myself because um, it's not so much for the person, but for me. So I forgive them so I could be free from hate, from depression, from stress, from unkindness. And you don't give to get back. You just give because you you have to give. So um, forgiveness brings peace. And everyone's talking about peace. So forgiveness brings peace for me. And um, forgive as as so so Christ could forgive you or God could forgive you. Whoever your God is, whoever your higher power is, wherever you find that comfort. That's where my piece is. So awesome Sunday. I love the code. Thank you. Awesome Sunday. Awesome Sunday. So we have two educators um, on here that's pouring into um, our, 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 our children. And I know that um, conversations that we have are being poured into conversations that's needing to be had. So um, I appreciate that. And Naheem, I just want to say I love you and thank you for coming in. And I, I know you're going through some stuff and moving. Moving is a pain in the butt. And we want to thank you for, for coming in. And uh, and for thank those of you, you that and those of you that are in Naheem's life, don't take his uh, kindness for weakness. Take take his gener generosity is because a man ha has a heart and he's sharing that space with you. Don't take him for granted. All right. He is a gift to this world. So I'm sending it out to you, your, your people. Hopefully they'll, they'll listen to this and, and get get on and realize um, their convenience is inconvenience you from moving on to doing the things that's important to you. So I'm going to say that. So I know you won't say it to your people, but I'm going to say it for you. Get your stuff together and help your brother. Before I leave, if I could just say this and even talking about we're not Jesus, but do we do take burdens like Jesus did? We are carrying a heavy load. We carry a heavy load. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and uh, that's the one thing we, we do have in common with, with the Lord is that we carry a burden, too. He said, you will experience all things in the universe, even death. So yes. with that said, I get to experience some love, real love coming from a very beautiful place. And I thank you all. I really thank do. You. Thank you. We're all grateful right. for you. Love I'm going to go brother. before I get beat up. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs> Get up. Well, speaking of throwing uh, a right, right, right cross and then a jab, Denise, um, beautiful person over there in Boston, educating our, our children, born that knowledge, spoken word artist, author, um, going to be an award winning author sometime soon. I can feel it coming. How's this quote? I'm going to ask Otis to, to deliver this one more time. And to be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. How's this cool, Lando? You, D. Ooh, grand rising. And I want to tell you, remember, we have three educators. Naheem is one of them. Not two. Right. Well, believe it or not, everyone everyone on, on, <laughs> on this show is an educator at some level. Didn't All you right? see him do three? Didn't you see? That's what he was saying. I'm one of them. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, this is heavy uh, because uh, it's basically my life. <laughs> uh, to be kind, um, I try to be kind. I try to lead with love. And one thing I've learned, um, 
I ask myself, what happened to this person when they unkind to me? Like, and my thing now is like, I hope you heal. That's what I've been telling people because I've been across a lot of people that not kind at all. And, and like Danny said, is that how you say your name? Daniel, <laughs> uh, you have to be kind without wanting anything back. And I've worked with people like they do something for you and after they throw it at your face. Yeah, I remember when I did this and did that for you. No, you never expect. You have to do stuff for people that you know is not going to be able to help you. That's when you're being kind. Uh, when the, you know they can't give it back to you. Um, and for me, I've been learned to be kind. And especially with my students, I have a lot of students that have been through a lot. And sometimes all they need is a hug and somebody to listen to them. They're looking for that love they don't they don't have at home. So I lead with love. I lead with kindness. Um, and it's been working for me because I feel better. Like for me, I want somebody to do that for me, to be kind without expecting me to give anything back. Uh, and when you lead with love, everything goes. And um, and sometimes, too, for me, the forgiveness. Uh, um, I've forgiven people that were not sorry. And that's hard to do because you forgive for yourself. And like everybody's saying, it's peace. Like it's a peace. Like it's you. You have peace because if you're angry, you're going to be angry at everybody. You're going to like go off on people that didn't do anything to you. And for me, I was angry for a long time, like my father. And it was just like a thing that kept building and I had to forgive him and let God take care of it. Um, and that's how forgiveness come to me. Like you have to forgive for yourself. You have to move on for stuff and letting go is beautiful. And uh, that's how I'm learning, letting go of people that are not sorry and forgive them for myself. That's how it landed on me. Right. Hmm. The big part of my take from, from that is, is, is letting go and not being sorry. So, sometimes when people are dragging their feet on their dream, don't carry them around because they just slow you down from getting to where you need to be. So um, I appreciate that. And uh, and thanks for correcting me that we have three educators on, on here because we have your, yourself, we have Naheem, we have um, Danielle. Um, if I'm missing any, anyone else. And when I say educators, the people that are actually making their living pouring into our, our system or our kids that you know, in a couple of months will be changed. I don't know what the, the landscape of education will, will be. Our history um, will be erased because they, they want to control the truth. So, um, yeah, that's scary, uh, uh, Kevin, because I heard that they want us to carry guns. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to teach uh, elementary kids with a gun. <laughs> I don't know. And that's uh, that's scary for me. And it's like they could like they said, you're going to put it on this like in a safe. But the kids we have today, they can open the safe before I do. And that's, well, you, you for know, me, that's scary. Two, two, two weeks ago, and, I, and I've shared this, a good friend lost his son because of a gun, because it was accessible um, to a child, because of the child's inability in order to resolve a problem, pull a bullet, bullet in the back of uh, a friend, another child's head, while they're playing video games. Um. So I, I, I don't know what to, to tomorrow is going to bring, but the one thing I, I, I can say when I speak the truth, they're not lying to you about what, what they're going to do. They're just going to do it and we can't do anything about it. We, we tried and we got kindness got overruled by greed. And um, so um, I, I'm not going to get on, on that soapbox. I'll be on it soon. I'll be on a short. Don't get excited, Vanessa. I'm going to be on it shortly. Don't get excited. So, uh, DC, Danielle Copeland, how do you feel about this quote? Grand rising, everyone. This quote and lands Thank for you me. for your gift, by the way. Thank you to all of you as well. I look forward to Sunday mornings. Uh, this quote for me reminds me of always extending grace because I never know when I'm going to need grace. To her as human, we're human, we make mistakes. And it's the grace that we receive from others that fills our hearts with gratitude and allows us to pay it forward. And that's how this quote lands with me today. Appreciate that. That was almost as short as Gilda's quote. <laughs> um, so we're going we're gonna to go over to Gilda. Gilda, uh, how does this quote land on you? Grand rising, everyone. Well, let me see. How does this quote <laughs> land on me? Treaty, okay. I think it would be like treat treat each other with kindness and forgiveness, as Christ did. That's how it 
it came on me. All right, and that's how she landed on uh, her. So um, we, we've hit every corner of the, the square, except for the voice of the, of the show. All right, and I know he's gonna turn, turn it up. And, and anytime did you have, um, it's cold as crap here and the sun's riding, rising and setting on hold as the voice, that man has been gifted with a, a tone, a baritone voice that slips down in the bass when he has inflections on other things, I will tell you, you're talking about something that should be on the other side of your pillow. You should wake up to Otis in the morning. Otis, how does this quote land on you? Grand rising again. I think if uh, one of the things Curtis was saying, being involved with customer service, you may deal with an angry customer, but maybe that customer's not just angry, they are going through something. And we as customer service agents need to recognize that and maybe a simple smile or saying, geez, what's wrong today to that person? Love one another. A simple smile can do it. A hug. Stop uh, looking at others and, and, and the way they live their lives. Nobody is perfect, has been said. It's also been said, those who are without sin, let them cast the first stone. That won't happen. So stop complaining about one another or how they live their lives. You know, Christians need to be more Christian and more caring because God is all about love. All right. All right. So to our, to our listeners, I know you're, you're sitting at home and you're thinking about this, you know, and, you know, you can look at the words on the page and says, and to be kind to one another tender hardness, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And you may dissect this word. I personally un understand what this quote is supposed to mean. It challenges all Christians to be kind and forgiving to one another, regardless of how they've been treated. We've heard that echoed through every single person on here. But me personally, I, I struggle with these words as to how religious has been twisted and wielded this mighty sword and only to chop off the head of the weak um, for in, in place for humanity and greed. Kindness is a gentle action in a manner um, that makes us all feel at ease. It expresses a look and a feel of our actions as we go beyond the words of just forgiving it's just an expression of kindness and compassion. But how can we ask, how can we be asked to be tender hearted when it's so easy for us to, to move from love to pity and sorrow? When the hard hearted has moved in the opposite direction and tossed out this quote from the Bible and don't, doesn't even hold itself to its own truth. God forgave them fully and freely. When the hard-hearted um, walks around with a grudge, when they torment and they, they threaten those and they oppose their will on people that don't have a will of themselves and claim to be good Christians, who pass around forgiveness like they were Skittles, when every color is uh, interlaced with a lack of God's uh, graciousness or kindness towards others. You know, when I got this quote, every person that claims to be Christian hasn't been saved. So these words, when they speak to me, sums up the unqualified conversation of a Christian that hasn't addressed or accepted Christ in this life. So for this, when I, I, I look at this quote and look at what we're struggling with today, I, I question good Christians. And I question those good Christians that haven't accepted God, but use God as a power in order to support their platform. And I know I went much deeper than what's most people. And to forgive, I, I would ask you to forgive yourself. Because at the end of the day, the person looking back at you is the only person that knows your truth. Right. And if your truth wields the sword of saying, I need to be forgiven for the choices I have made, then that's who you live with. And that's who you have to be kind with, kind to. So this, how quote, this quote landed on me. It was probably much heavier than what most people expected. But the one thing on this show, 
as that we honor each and every person's truth and based on our perspectives and interpretations. And I will tell you, I, I am struggling with humanity right now. My circle of friends are, are the people that I, I embrace. And the nice thing about knowing what I know now is I know now know who the players are in, in this world because they have showed their hand. They have made their voice clear. And believe it or not, when all is about a finite mindset of winning, everyone loses. So with that said, this is how it landed on, on me. So not to be a Debbie Downer, but to speak the truth. Um, this is my how the quote landed on me. We meet here every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We basically bring a quote based on interpretations and our perspectives. We give our, our, our take on it. Sometimes it's lighthearted. Sometimes it's very motivating and moving. And sometimes we are way too honest and some people are not prepared to take the truth. So with that said, I'm going to ask um, uh, Curtis to um, close the show for us. So my grandfather always said, when you get to a place in life that you can help someone else out, he says, reach, he says it's your duty to do so. He said, reach one, teach one. And with that said, we what? We fade to black. And ladies and gentlemen, we're out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.